You, my wonderful watchers, have been asking me for weeks and weeks and weeks for my nail secrets on how I grow my long, strong nails. I did tell you in last week's video that I do use a special professional only gel, but you still all wanted to know how it is that I apply it and what I do. So here you go. My natural nails have always been really poor and I used to look enviously at people who could grow their nails. And I tried all sorts of professional products, but until I discovered this gel from Gel2, which is the Skyscraper Foundation Gel, it has always been out of my reach. I'll put full links in the description of where you can purchase this gel, but do remember you can only buy it if you are a trained professional. If you're not a trained professional and you want to be able to grow your nails like me, then there are thousands of technicians out there, both in the US and the UK, that offer this gel. It's also my secret on how I create a false nail when one breaks, and you can see this one snapped off. I've even got a splinter hemorrhage because it really, really hurt and that was tidying the kids' playroom. But I didn't panic too much because I can just pull out a form and build a new nail. I've tried numerous brands of nail sculpting forms, but these from Crystal Nails are my absolute favorite and I've been using them for a few years now. They're just so easy and nice to work with and really versatile. If you haven't seen a nail sculpting form before, basically these are used to sculpt nails instead of sticking tips on. I much prefer it because it means you can get a much more natural looking nail and get them nice and thin and have total control over them. I also find them much quicker because you're not having to find tips for the right size and blending them in. However, trying to apply it on my wrong hand under camera just made me look like a complete and utter pillock. Just a quick explanation, what I'm actually doing is if I didn't already have this nail built, I would put the form on and get it tucked just underneath that free edge of my natural nail get it really close up under the nail in a nice position and then stick it down properly and then you actually apply the gel onto the nail and over the form and that is how you build the nail without having to apply a tip. Now two weekly I rebalance these nails and for this I use a 100 180 grit file and the lower the file number the higher the grit and the more abrasive or rough that it is and a 240 grit natural nail file. On the edges of the file they can be very sharp on brand new ones and that's how you can cut the skin. So it's very important to actually key them in first to soften the edges. I key mine in by getting an older file of the same grit or abrasiveness and just file down those edges of the nail files at a 45 degree angle. So I'm using a 240 old file on my 240 new file and a 240 is the most abrasive you should go on the natural nail. I have covered some of this information in one of my old videos, how to paint your nails like a professional, but to be honest, it's a bit painful to watch because in those days, my camera was really pants. A few other bits and pieces I can't live without are my plush brush and my stiff nail brush. My plush brush is lovely for brushing dust off and also tickling the palms of your hands because it feels really good. And then my stiff nail brush I use to get rid of the nail filing dust around the nails when I've been doing enhancements. Okay, now we've got all that official blurb out of the way, it's time to get on to the action shots. And what I'm basically doing here is I'm starting with filing off my top coat, because I do apply an acetone resistant top coat over the top of my gel to try and protect it when I'm taking polish on and off. I'm also refining the shape, which is why this is called a rebalance and not just an infill, because an infill can be where they just put a blob of new product at the bottom by the cuticle area, but this is putting our apex and our arches all back in the right place. Which, if you're not a nail tech, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about, and it probably just sounds like I've gone rhubarb, 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 but it does make sense, I will explain in a bit. And what I've basically done here is take off the top coat and just go down to that layer of gel with the 100-180 grit file, and then I've swapped to the 240 because what I'm just doing around the cuticle area here is blending that line in because we don't want a bump. And then this happened. Okay, own up, who was willing me to break a nail so I showed you how I had to repair them? I literally could have cried and then I was like, oh, just get on with it Nat, get on with it. And I thought, bingo, I can show you how I repair a nail. Yes, this video will take me a whole lot longer than I thought, but you get to see the secrets. So a really quick filing lesson, I start by going parallel either side of the nail, this is filing off the old product, and just going down to that layer of gel, but I go either side parallel to keep those nails nice and slim. And you can see that I'm actually keeping the file upright before I start to blend it over the top of the nail. Then we go into the TV control method, and then it's into the horseshoe. Oh, these are just my names for it. And it's just so we get a nice even filing off without any flat spots. Swap back to a 240 file and finish off around those edges. 
In the meantime, what I have done is I filed off the excess from that little finger, ready to completely remove it and start again to repair the break. And for removal, I'm using my Pro Tip Clips. These are great for gel polishes and glitter regular polish too. And I'm just going to take a square of cotton wool pad and soak it in acetone and apply it to the offending nail. Now I'm going to say that doing this under camera is hard. Doing this with a brandy and coke, watching a movie on the sofa in the evening is a lot, lot easier. Now we're going to leave it for about 15 minutes, but after six minutes or so, I take it off and remove any excess. And you can see it starts to flake off really nicely. I like to put a little more acetone on the pad, pop it back on and soak again for another six minutes or so. After the other six minutes, remove and then take the excess off. If you give it a couple of seconds, it tends to peel back once the air gets to it. And if there's any residue left on the nail, you can just remove that with a plastic back pad and acetone. I'm also just cleaning around those breaks. There's actually two, and these are pre-existing breaks that I've repaired before. Once the acetone has evaporated, it's time to glue the nails. And this is my current favorite nail glue, which is the Elegant Touch Firm Hold. And I apply it to the nail first and then wiggle it a bit to get it right into that break and then apply a little bit more and then hold it firm. Try not to glue your other fingers to your nail. I've done that a lot of times before. Okay, on to my ultimate favorite cuticle tools. I cannot be without these when I've had to fly with them. I risk taking them in my hand luggage because at least I could try and get them back, but if they lose my case, they're gone forever. A few hints and tips, be really, really careful using any metal tools around your natural nails because they can cause damage. But all I'm doing here is just pushing down to remove cuticle. Now cuticle is actually this white fluffy stuff which is coming up with my precision tool and it's actually dry skin that sticks to the nail as it grows out. Your cuticle is not the line of skin around the base of the nail which I'll explain in a bit but you can see that this tool gets it off really nicely. I used to use an actual cuticle remover gel but I've actually found over time that I think my nails last better and they certainly don't lift if I do dry cuticle removal. Once I've finished removing the cuticle, I just take that 240 grit file one more time just around the base of the nail to make sure I've just keyed in anywhere that I've removed cuticle. Once I've removed the dust and cleansed with isopropyl alcohol, it's time to get ready to apply the gel. And we're going to begin by applying the Gel Skyscraper Base Coat. And we only need to apply this where there's natural nail visible or exposed. It doesn't need to go over the whole nail. On this one it will because we've taken all the gel off. So we're going to apply it over the whole nail and just at the tips. Because I realized the shape of my nail had gone a bit gimpy, I decided to put a form on and just build up one side of the nail where it's actually gone a bit slanted. I don't know what I've done. Maybe I had too many brandies when I was filing that one. And rebalancing with this gel is so easy. I just use a square gel brush and then get a small amount of gel onto the brush. And you can see it really is a small amount. And then I just pat it around the cuticle area. And this is because all we need to do is apply it just around that area and put our arch back into place. Now gel and acrylic perform very differently. Acrylic you have to push into place and gel you have to pull into place. So you sort of have to think how the gel is going to act and go there first, if that makes sense. And once I'm happy with my positioning, I just draw it over the nail to balance it all out. And you can see from the side view, you've got a nice even shape. We want our product to do the work when we're applying it, not our file to have to put the nail into shape. To build the nail is slightly different. So this is my naked little finger, excuse the expression. And we're going to take a bit more product on the brush this time and apply it in a line from the cuticle area to the tip of the nail. And then I'm going to take some more gel on the brush, a little bit less this time. And starting at the center, I'm going to start fanning out. And this is just going, wiggling the brush back and forth up to the cuticle area from the center. And trying to keep most of the product in the center distance between the cuticle area and the tip of the nail, as that's where we need the strength. And repeat this again on the other side. And then I'm just going to put a little extra product down that wonky side of the nail there and that we can find to shape afterwards. Once you're happy with the nail, cure it, and when it's cured, you can take off your form. 
and then just cleanse off the sticky layer or the inhibition layer with isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm going to file into shape and I'm using the 180 grit side of my nail file for this. I just prefer to use that generally. And exactly like we did before, I'm going to get those sides nice and parallel and slim. Then I'm just going to use my same filing methods as before just to put the nail into shape. What you're aiming to do when you look at the side of the nail is you want the most product, so the highest part of your arch, to be at the centre point between the cuticle and the tip, unless you have really long nails like me in which case you move the most product and the arch a bit further back towards the cuticle. Another important thing to do is to keep that lower arch, that line where the nail comes out, quite straight if you can before you start to taper for your pointed tips. This is to protect the strength of the nail. Now you can see that nail that was broken is all lovely and fixed and strong again. Yay! I like to go over with a buffing block just to remove any of the filing scratches and it helps to give that really nice smooth finish before you top coat. Also been asked how do I file my nails into this almond shape and as you can see I have the file actually angled almost like 45 degrees and I draw the file round to the tip. For an even shape it's important to look down the c-curve to see if the thickness is equal you can see there's a bit extra on one side which I'll file off but that's an important technique for getting a nice shape. Brush off any excess dust and then simply take a pad soaked with isopropyl alcohol and cleanse the nails ready to top coat. I use the Gel 2 No Cleanse Top Coat as it doesn't leave a sticky layer and I'm lazy and like things to be finished even quicker. Apply the top coat nice and evenly over all the nails and remember to cap the edge before you cure in your lamp. Now I choose to apply this top coat over my gel because with using acetone in my videos so often I don't want to actually ruin the gel underneath. Now onto the all important and final stage which is cuticle care and cuticle oil. This bit here is not your cuticle, that is your epinicium and is living tissue and this is your side wall or lateral fold and is also living tissue. Don't ever cut those if you can absolutely avoid it. What you need to do is moisturise the area around that and inside here where you get your cuticle and for that we use cuticle oils. Now here is a selection of cuticle oils that I've used over the last five years. Originally I used to use the CND solar oil and more recently, and I still do now, use the Gel 2 Organic Cuticle Oil, and this is my favourite. It's got a nice little push button on the top, which picks up just the right amount of oil, and I keep this on my bedside table for night times. Just apply one drop to each nail, and then rub in. However, this is no good when I'm filming videos, as it would leave greasy marks over the polish, which doesn't look good under camera. And that is why I started experimenting with cuticle oil pens. Now this is the Nails Ink, and it was my first one. However, this is the only one of the five that does not contain jojoba oil. This means that it cannot penetrate your actual nail plate, which is very, very important. Next, I tried the SE cuticle pen, and this is more of a strange gel that comes out. It smells like nectarines. I think it's nectarines, might be apricots. The only thing is, after you've been wearing it a while, it starts to smell a little bit like vomit. And finally, we have Simply Pure by Bliss Kiss. I just bought some Simply Peel from the US and the shipping fees and import taxes were so high that I thought in for the penny in for the pound and ordered a load of this cuticle oil as well. I'm currently trialling it and I'm really liking it. I'll have to use it for a few more months before I know if it beats my gel too. And there you have it, my secrets for long strong nails. My natural nails are hideously brittle. You only have to look at my older videos when I have my natural nails to see how short and manky they really were. And this gel has transformed them. If you're not a professional and you can't buy it, then I would say just check out with some of your local nail techs and see who it is that would provide it for you. It is the best gel I've used so far, so do make sure what they're offering you is the Skyscraper Foundation. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to give me that big thumbs up and subscribe for videos twice a week.